Hello Church, welcome to Midweek Wednesday Worship Service. Uh, wherever you are, and then hope and pray that you can uh, join us. And then His worshiper must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So I hope and pray that wherever you are, your place will be filled with God's spirit so that you can come before God as uh, His worshiper. So the vital work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so let's just... Uh, Go in and ask him for his understanding, also ask him for his presence, okay? So would you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Now I desperately ask you for your presence, Lord. We are hungry for your presence. We are hungry for your grace, Lord. Be with us. Touch our heart. We want to see and we want to taste your goodness and your greatness as well, Lord. Be with us. And then, uh, and then help us to be saturated by your, your word and your spirit. And then we experience God's spirit-filled worship service so that our life will be changed by your, your word. Be with us, Lord. And then we worship you with all our hearts. Receive this worship service. We glorify your name in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. All right, this time let's sing, let's sing together. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands together. Lord, please come and open our hearts. Open our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you Sing once again Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Sing that again, open the eyes Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. To see you. Hide and lift it up. Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you hide and lift it up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Once again, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. To see you. How to lift it up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour up your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you hide and lift it up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, 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 I want to 
see you. Sing that again. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 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 How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Always see how great, how great is our God. How great is our our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Splendor, okay. the splendor of the King. Close in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness cries to hide and tremble at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great! Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? Always see how great, how great is our God? How great, how great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God. Always see how great, how great is our God. Ace to ace is there. And time means in the same beginning and the end, beginning and the end. No God had three in one, Father, Spirit, His Son, the right and the left. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Always see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. 
praise is our God. Sing with me, our great is our God. Always see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Word all pray my heart will see how great is our God see once again name above all names worthy of all Is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Always see how great, how great. Is our God how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Always see how great, how great. Is our God, our Heavenly Father, you are true King and true our God. Lord, we now come before you with a humble heart. We confess that, Lord, you are only God. You are King of kings over our life. And then we admit that you are sovereignty over my life, Lord. So, Lord, I know so you will grant grace to those who are humble. Please give us that grace so that we are we are experiencing your goodness to goodness and your greatness together, Lord. So as we uh, listen to your word, open our heart and touch our heart and receive your word as a uh, your word through our pastor, Pastor Frankie. Please bless his mouth and his heart and fill his heart with your spirit and as whatever he says through his mouth let it be your word Lord thank you Lord bless us and be with us in the precious name of your son Jesus Christ we pray Amen Good evening, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, thank you for being here with us on this beautiful evening. Uh, I hope you are well, uh, that you are still sane, and that you are doing your best for the glory of God even uh, during these times. Uh, it goes without saying that we are always here uh, for you, uh, but if you ever need prayer, uh, want to pick our brains uh, regarding some scripture you've been sitting on, or you just want to say hello, uh, please never, ever hesitate uh, to give us a ring, uh, to send us a text or even a, an email. Uh, we just want to say that we miss you all very dearly and cannot wait uh, to be reunited in God's house while practicing social distancing. Right? But until then, uh, let us continue to be patient and in prayer uh, as we are being discerning and filled with God's wisdom on when and how we should move forward. And so with that said, would you join me in prayer as we get ready to take a look at tonight's scripture. Let us pray. 
Uh, Father, we thank you so much for today. God, we thank you for just this sacred time. God, we thank you for this break in the middle of our week where we can look to you, seek you, God, learn more about you, and, and figure out ways on how to apply your scripture uh, to our existence and to our everyday living. Father, would you continue to anoint our minds and our hearts as we get ready to look at your word, as we get ready to read it, and as we get ready to receive it. Father, we pray that your spirit will be amongst us, that it would be moving and that, God, you would give us wisdom and understanding. God, we thank you so, so much. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, so tonight we are in Hebrews chapter 4. We're continuing our journey through the book of Hebrews. Uh, tonight we, we will be looking at verses 14 all the way to 16. And like always, I will be reading from the ESV translation. And so um, if you want to, you're more than welcome to, to stand as we show reverence to the reading of God's word. Once again, it's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. This is what it says. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. And if you are standing, you may be seated. You know, I like to I like to watch a, a lot of crime uh, related shows, like shows like Chicago PD. I don't know if you're familiar with these shows, right? Chicago PD, uh, Law and Order, and even The Flash. All right, for those of you who know what that is. But one thing that I've noticed when it comes to people facing charges in a courtroom, it doesn't matter if they're innocent or they're guilty. Right, some some seem guilty, but they're they're innocent, and then there are the others that um that seem innocent, right? Or uh, they just seem like to be another victim, but yet come to find out they are guilty, and so if their DA, aka defense attorney, stinks, then bye bye freedom, right? You can kiss your chances at being not guilty goodbye. You see, having a defense attorney who's willing to fight for you matters, right? Having a, a, de a, a defense attorney who's willing to go the, di the distance for you is vitally important. And having a defense attorney who understands you and can relate to you is important when you are making your case. Right? Having, a, having an, a defense attorney who's invested in you and your situation and your well-being and your outcome. And these are important, important things. Because who's representing you, right? Your representation, especially in that courtroom, it matters. And so the relationship they have with the court can be helpful in, in regards to the defense attorney, the DA, you know, for your DA, their credentials and their track record, I, I imagine, are important when it comes to their reputation, especially when they are before the judge in that courtroom. And so if you ever find yourself in a courtroom for something that you've done or having a good defense attorney can help lessen right, your penalty or even your fine. Or if you're standing in a courtroom wrongfully accused, you better get the best dang defense attorney possible to prove your innocence. But I must add that I hope, I, I hope you never find yourself in a courtroom pleading for your life. I never hope to be in that. I, hope, I never hope that you are in that situation. I never hope to find myself in that situation. But if we think about it at a deeper level, at a more sentimental level, then when all is said and done with this life, you and I will have to answer to the judge of will have to answer to the judge of the highest 
court, right? The judge who is the judge of all things, right? God the Father. And we will have to answer for all the wrongs we have done, all the sins we have committed. And when God slaps what looks like a multiple volume set of the Encyclopedia Britannica that ends up being a list of all the recorded sin of our life, you are going to wish in that very moment that you had the best defense attorney known to man. And that's what Hebrews 4 is making the case for. Except it's not for the best defense attorney, but it's for the greatest, the great high priest, the greatest high priest known to man. And we know him to be none other than Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ is both your Lord and Savior, then this great priest, this great high priest, is your representation before the highest of courts. And so this is why, or I'm sorry, so why is the high, high priest so important? And why make that connection with Jesus Christ? You see, in Judaism, the high priest was the one individual who stood as your mediator between you and God. Right? He, the high priest, is single-handedly the most important person within the customary laws of Judaism. The high priest, known as Gohen Gadol, right, in, in, in the Hebrew language, was the chief of the officiating priests in the ancient temple of Jerusalem. In other words, he was the top dog of all the priests, right? He was the head honcho, right? When it came to all the priests, he was your boss's boss, right? That's like how high his status was. You see, the Kohen Gadol was something that you were born into. You had to be a member of the priestly caste known as the Kohanim, right? It kind of sounds like Hanani, right? Kohanim, right? And this lineage are descendants of Aaron, also known as Moses's brochacho. You see, the Kohen Kadal, the high priest, he was the principal func- the, the principal function of the high priest was the performance of Yom Kippur, right? also known as the Day of Atonement. And that was the one day a year where people would have to bring a sacrifice to pay for all the sins they had committed that year. And in order for this to be properly done, in order for this to be properly performed, carried out, it required the usage of the high priest. No one, none other than the high priest could perform what was necessary at the Day of Atonement. Right, you see the the high priest had to bathe himself, right, first and foremost before he could go and make anyone else's sins clean. He had to go and bathe himself, right, he had to go clean himself. And then after he cleaned himself, after he cleansed himself by taking a bath, then he had to be dressed in special linen garments, right, in order to receive and offer sacrifices unto the Lord. You see, the Day of Atonement was the one day out of the entire year where the high priest could actually enter into the holiest of holies and not die. Right? There are stories of even that the high priest would have to tie a rope around his waist. And as he was being sent into the holiest of holies, if he didn't come out after a certain amount of times, if they tugged and there was no tug back, they would have to drag his body out of the holiest of holies. And the reason why we're talking so much about the, uh, about the high priest is because the high priest was the most important person when it came to you and your standing with God. He was the one person you depended on carrying out the sacrifices for you and your entire household every year at the Day of Atonement. It was through the high priest acting on your behalf that you would get a clean slate. 
Right? Do you not see, do you not realize just how important the high priest was when it came to our relationship and our interaction with God the Father? You see, the high priest was your DA, defense attorney. He was your advocate. He was the only one, right, he, who would represent you. He was your only source of representation. He was the very person acting on your behalf. And if that's truly the case, right, if that's truly necessary, if that's truly the requirement when it came to atoning our sins, when it came to the Day of Atonement and needing a mediator, right, acting on our behalf, then why wouldn't you want the great high priest, right, the greatest high priest acting on your behalf? And in this instance, and when it comes to our faith, that is who? That is Jesus Christ. Communicating to who? The Father. On your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf. And so what makes Jesus, the great high priest, so great? A few things to consider tonight. The first one is this. What makes Jesus, the great high priest, so great is that he, the high priest, is able to sympathize with us. You see, in verse 15 it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, and here's the kicker, yet without sin. You see, in other words, our high priest isn't one that is separated from us, right? He isn't one that is out, out, out of our grasp, out of reach, right? He's not out of touch with our society. But our great high priest is one who is connected to us because he knows what we are going through. He's able to identify with what we're going through. He's able to resonate with what we experience in our temptation. Because he himself was tempted. Right? That's, no, that's, no, that's, that's nothing new to us. Right? We all know that Jesus was tempted. Right? Not only did he face temptation, but he was tempted in the presence of Satan and didn't succumb to his temptation. Right? He was victorious. See, the interesting thing about that is that Satan was face to face with Jesus and they were going at it and Satan was doing everything in his power man, to make Jesus stumble, to make Jesus fall, to make Jesus succumb to his temptations. But he didn't. But for us as people, we have Satan whispering in the bushes. We have Satan whispering to us from the darkness trying to get us to stumble. And man, even that in itself is hard, it's tough when we have good days and we have bad days. But that was, and that's not to make, give us a pity party, but that's just to show just how great Jesus being tempted and overcoming his temptation means for us. You see, the word tempted here in the Greek is Pe-i-razo, and it carries two different meanings. The first one is uh, being tempted, right? It's temptation with the intention of bringing down. And so when we think about Jesus being tempted, it wasn't something that was easy, but it was in every respect, Satan was trying to do his best to destroy Jesus in his flesh. He was doing everything that he could to break Jesus in his flesh. But the second meaning that this word carries, and once again that word is pei razo, right? The second meaning for this word means testing, right? Not temptation, but testing designed to build up. In other words, it's a testing to make stronger, to, to be mature, right? Kind of like having life lessons shaping you for the future. And like I said earlier, Satan tempted Jesus in order for him to be destroyed. But that didn't happen. You see, God allowed Jesus to be tempted so that he would be shaped and mature not only for the future, but for our sake as well. Since he has become our example and our success 
story. Because we are able to look to Jesus and see that he did not succumb to temptation. That gives us hope. That gives us power. That gives us affirmation. That gives us strength. That gives us encouragement. Right? It's in one thing that we have to understand about Jesus being tempted is that when Jesus was tempted, he didn't hide behind his divinity. Right? He didn't hide behind his, his holiness. He didn't use it as a shield to protect him from the things of this world. But instead, right, he was faced with temptations in his humanity. In other words, as Jesus encountered his temptation, he was fully human. And as a result, he can relate to what we are going through. And because he is able to relate to us, he is also able to sympathize. And comfort us in the midst of our own temptation. And so instead of showing us judgment and saying, look, I'm better than you, I'm mightier than you, I'm higher than you. Instead, it shows that Jesus was willing to lower himself so that he could better identify with what we went through as humanity. Kind of, kind of further iterates that Jesus is of the people and for the people. The second thing is this. Right? Because of Jesus, we are able to come before the throne. And that's what makes Jesus such a great high priest, the greatest high priest, is because of him we are able to come before the throne of God. In verse 16 it says this, Let us then with confidence, keyword confidence, Draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Right? In time of need, we are able to seek his help. We are able to seek his counsel. We are able to allow him to sympathize with us and to comfort us. But we are told a, a key word there. Confidence. We are told to do this with confidence. You see, draw, you see, because of sin, drawing near to God should be the last thing on our mind. Right? Because of sin, we are unworthy. Because of sin, we are the furthest thing from being holy. And because of sin, we deserve death. Right? And so as it says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. And I can just hear you completing that sentence for me. But because of sin, that's what we deserve. And so how could I ever imagine to come before the throne of God with confidence? And that's what makes Jesus so great. You see, it's because of Jesus. Because Jesus is our great high priest. We don't have to approach the throne of God with fear or trembling or, or with uncertainty. Instead, we are told to approach with confidence. And that's not because of anything that you and I have done or anything that you and I could ever do, but it's simply based off of what Jesus is and what Jesus has done. In other words, it's because of who is our representation. That's because of who our high priest is. And that's because God sees Jesus and what he's done. He sees his completed work. He sees his blood. He sees his sacrifice. When you and I as followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, come before his throne. We're able to do so in confidence because we're not boasting and what we've done, but we are boasting in what Jesus has done and what the cross has accomplished on our behalf. But notice what the author of Hebrews calls this throne. I think it's worth pointing out. He calls it a throne of grace. You see, without Jesus, without Jesus being our great high priest, I don't think we could call it a throne of grace. I think a more accurate description would be something like a throne of judgment or a throne of condemnation. 
Because essentially, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, because of sin, that's what we deserve. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it said, we are told that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, there is no condemnation for us when Jesus Christ is your high priest. And so the last thing is this. Right? Because Jesus Christ is our high priest, and because Jesus Christ is the great, the greatest high priest, let us remember this. Let us hold fast our confession. In verse 14, right, which is the verse that we started uh, this evening with, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. You see, we have a great high priest, the only great high priest who has descended from heaven only to ascend back to heaven. Right, we are talking about Jesus, the Son of God, the author, and the author of Hebrews is continually making the argument. He's making the point of Jesus' place in light of what Judaism has been teaching and practicing. You see, all these customs, all these practices has been setting the stage for the necessity and the greatness of who Jesus is. You see, Israel has been practicing all this time offering sacrifices only to have Jesus come and to be the ultimate sacrifice, to be the ultimate high priest acting on our behalf. And so how great is that? How amazing is that? And here we have our author telling us to hold fast to our confession. And so what is our confession? Right, when we think about our, our, our confession of faith, our confession of hope, or what makes Jesus who he is in our lives, I think it's very easy to make the connection to John chapter 3, verse 16. I think it summarizes it very well. And I'll actually leave that uh, to Pastor Younghee and this Sunday's message because John uh, 3, 16 is actually going to come up in our text this weekend. And so I'll save that for that. But another uh, summary of our confession of faith can be found in two places put together. The first one is Romans chapter 5 verse 8. And the second one can be Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10. And I'll go ahead and read that for you. And it will come up on our screen as well. But this is what it says. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While, while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. So not only was Jesus Christ the high priest that we needed to carry out this sacrifice, he was also the sacrifice, the very sacrifice that we needed to atone for our sins. Right? That's the part of the confession of our faith. And then Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 says this, And if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. All of this Jesus did for our sake. He was creating the only way, the one way, that one, that one uh, straight of passage for us to reach the Father is because of what Jesus did. It's because of who Jesus is and was and is to come. And it's because of everything that he did, everything that he conducted, everything that he performed as the great high priest. He is unmatched. This is Jesus Christ. Our great priest. And because Jesus Christ is our great priest, then we have every reason to turn to him. We have every reason to go to him. 
We have every reason to talk to him and to listen to him because we have a high priest who is able to what? Sympathize with us. And because he is able to sympathize with us, he is also able to comfort us. He's able to guide us. He's also able to encourage us. And so why wouldn't you want to look to him? Why wouldn't you want to surrender and trust him with your very life and death? This is Jesus Christ, our great high priest. And like I said earlier, who has done everything in his power to offer everything that was necessary to make a way to the Father. Because at the end of it all, when all is said and done, I want Jesus to act on my behalf. Because of God's great love for me, I want Jesus to step in and to be my representation. I want him to be the high priest who is performing the very sacrifice that is necessary for me to be welcomed with confidence before not a throne of condemnation, not a throne of judgment, but a throne of grace. Church, You and I, because we profess Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, we have the greatest high priest and the only high priest we will ever need. Church, my prayer for you, my my prayer for myself, my prayer for us is that we will continue to look to him, that we will continue to trust in him, That we would continually surrender over our life to him and say, God, I trust you. God, I know that you are sovereign. And I know that when my life is in your hands, that you are continually in control. And that's all because of what Jesus has done on our behalf as the great high priest. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this word. And God, we thank you for this reminder. I think a, a lot of times we forget that we need a representation. God, that we need Jesus to step in front of us and before uh, judgment and to plead our case. That when God sees us, we know that when he sees us by ourselves, that God, he sees our sin. But because of your son, Jesus Christ, when he steps in, he sees what he has done. He sees his sacrifice and his love and his bloodshed for our sin. And so, Father, may we continue to look to you. But, God, may we continue to trust uh, and trust our lives in the hands of Jesus Christ. Because he is truly the one and only high priest that we need. And he continually needs to be the confession of our hope, of our faith, and our lives. God, I pray that in the uncertainty of all that is going on, may we hold fast to the confession of our faith. Now we ask that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit lead us, guide us, empower us, and be with us until we meet again. It is in Jesus' name that we pray all these things. Amen and amen. May you go in peace. Enjoy the rest of your week, church. Amen.